Hello, I'm Ben Jones from 1PLM, and today we're going to be running through some of the visualisation capabilities within NX. In particular, this video will demonstrate the appearance management, enabling the user to rapidly create and transpose between different schemes comprised of materials and decals. Appearance management is an easy and efficient way to complete your digital twin by fully defining the visualisation of your product. To exemplify the use of NX Render and its appearance management tools, I have loaded this combi drill with a predefined scheme into my NX session. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate to the Render tab, which is going to provide me with all the tools I need to generate a photorealistic image from within inside NX visualisation. In addition to the Render tab, NX also provides some additional palettes for the selection of system scenes and materials. These palettes provide a wide range of indoor, outdoor and studio system scenes, as well as over a thousand materials with unique properties and textures, ranging from gemstones to emissive materials, and then your more conventional metals, plastics and woods. This library provides an outstanding starting point on which properties can be modified to create a unique look and feel bespoke to your product. I'll now navigate to the Appearance Management group and load the scheme predefined for this product. To fully interrogate this pre-existing blue and black appearance scheme, I must first open up and undock the Appearance Scheme Navigator. It is in here that I will find all of the saved schemes and geometry designators that allow me to quickly apply materials to faces and bodies. The ability to name designators enables the user to operate within the context of their own product and allows them to confidently assign materials to the different scheme designators. I will now initiate the Ray Trace Studio, which will allow us to see how our final render will look. The model is yet to have any materials applied to either the jaws or the area containing the LED. Let's now create some additional designators for both the jaws and the LED. Simply type the name of the designator and use the selection filters to select the relevant geometry. I'm now going to pan the model slightly to enable me to select the relevant faces of the LED. A geometry selection hierarchy allows me to overwrite materials that are applied to a body. In order to do this, I must first change my selection filter to face before selecting the area of the model to overwrite. With these new designators created, I can reactivate camera one and then open up the Ray Trace Studio. With my NX session configured, I can now drag materials directly from my materials in part palette onto the designators and see them update in real time in the Ray Trace Studio. I'm now going to activate camera two for a better view of the chuck and jaws. As the Ray Trace Studio continues to refine the image, you start to see the texture of the material applied. Now I'm going to apply a custom material that I created earlier with a knurled texture that creates the effect of 3D geometry on a smooth cylindrical face. With all the designator geometry defined, we have completed the blue and black appearance scheme. The strength of NX appearance management is that designator geometry is maintained across schemes. I can even duplicate schemes to remove unnecessary work when only making minor changes between schemes. I can now manage my schemes from both the Appearance Management group on the Render tab, as well as from within the Appearance Scheme Navigator. I'm now going to duplicate the blue and black appearance scheme and change the primary colour from blue to yellow. Now it's just as simple as dragging and dropping a different material onto the primary colour designator. I'm going to reactivate camera one and again run the Ray Trace Studio. We now have the two separate schemes, yellow and black and blue and black, and I can switch between these effortlessly with the Ray Trace Studio updating live in my NX session.
These schemes now store materials independently of each other, assigned to each individual designator. So I can now drag and drop different materials, i.e. the blacked brushed steel and blacked knurled steel, onto this blue and black without affecting the yellow and black scheme. To finish off this render, I've arranged some additional batteries to be included in the backdrop. However, I want these to be slightly out of focus, and this can be achieved with the creation of depth of field, which is found within the edit view dialog box. But first, let's activate the third camera and run the Ray Trace Studio to see how it looks. As you can see from the Ray Trace Studio, both the drill and the additional batteries are in focus. So what we need to do is exit the Raytrace Studio and make an edit to camera 3. From this dialog box I'm then able to add depth of field and choose from a list of different aperture values. Once I have my aperture value selected, I can then also specify a focal distance. In this particular case I'm going to specify the focal distance to be exactly the same as the distance from target which will ensure the drill remains in focus whilst the batteries have a slight blurred effect. I can click OK to this and run the Ray Trace Studio for the last time. So to recap, in this video we have seen the use of appearance management to create designator geometry. These designators were then used to rapidly generate the visualization of different product variants with live feedback in the Ray Trace Studio. Finally, we have used a camera view to limit the depth of field in the final render to generate photoreal images in minutes. I hope you've enjoyed the content of this video. I'd like to thank you for your time and attention.